Well, the Republican presidential nomination process officially kicking off with the Iowa caucuses tonight. Voters there braving below zero temperatures when they head to their caucus sites. Doors open at 5 p.m. Central Time. The caucuses begin promptly at 7 p.m. The Republican presidential candidates are holding events across the Hawkeye State today to make their final pitches to the voters out there. During events yesterday, they encouraged supporters to get out, vote, despite that extreme weather. Watch this. We got to do it. We got to do it big. You got to get out. You can't sit home. If you're sick as a dog, you say, darling, I got to make it. You are free to speak your mind at every step of the way. And with your help tomorrow night, that is what we will revive. I know you're excited. I'm excited because it's been 11 months and it comes down to tomorrow. I don't know what the overall turnout's going to be. I, obviously, I think the weather is going to impact it, but I think our folks are turning out. Joining me now, former Bush 43 White House official and West Front Strategies founding partner Ashley Davis and Fox News contributor, 32 Advisors founder and CEO and former economic advisor to President Obama, Robert Wolf. Guys, thank you so much for being here. What a morning as we finally, finally begin to hear from the voters uh, today. Uh, Robert, I want to start with you because th the question is Iowa, which a lot of times is not the best predictor of who the eventual primary candidate is hey, going to be. Doing? But, Robert, on the other side, New Hampshire is going to be a very different story. So kind of compare and contrast those two for me. Yeah, Cheryl, spot on. If you look at the last seven Republican Iowa caucuses, I think two went on to actually win the GOP primary season, whereas in New Hampshire, it was five out of the last seven. Even the last three GOP caucus winners, none of them went on to win um, the, the primary season. Um, what I'm looking for, and, and Ashley obviously is more of an expert in this, but I'm looking for is what Trump does. Because if he comes in under 50 percent, you know, because he's more of an incumbent candidate, then that means 50 percent actually didn't choose him. And if that's so, then you're really looking at who comes in number two. And if Nikki Haley comes in at number two, then she has all the mojo going into New Hampshire. No question about it. Yeah, and Ashley, to pick up on Robert's point, you know, with Chris Christie bowing out, uh, those anti-Trump Republicans, the thinking is for New Hampshire, are going to go over to Nikki Haley. Uh, what do you make of all of this? Absolutely, and they already started to. But I think what really comes out of this evening is probably going to be, is does this become a two-person race after this evening? Ron DeSantis has already said he's not going to play in New Hampshire. He's going straight to South Carolina if he even makes it that far. So this could be after today or at least this week, just a Trump-Haley race. I do agree 100 percent with Robert that New Hampshire is a very important state. Nikki continues to tick up actually in all states and I think that it will be a really good indication for her going into South Carolina what momentum she has or not. Well Robert let's talk about the economy because the Washington Post is out with a new article that's called the economy is improving under Biden but many voters aren't giving him credit for this and this is true it says a broad and diverse cross-section of American voters say they are experiencing the Biden economy as a challenging time rising prices, high interest rates. That's according to interviews that they did with more than 80 uh, voters in four parts of the country. They went to Vegas, Milwaukee, Phoenix, rural Georgia. That is going to be a big issue, if not the issue, Robert, is the economy. Yeah, actually, I think on the economy, we're going to have uh, uh, the wind at our back in 24. Throughout all of 2023, purchasing power increases. Wages actually outperformed inflation. With that being said, Inflation has a long tail. It's hard out there. And so I'm not trying to hear say I'm going to ring the bell and, you know, we're, we're where we want to be. But I think actually we're going to continue to improve. So I actually think Biden should focus on the economy and, and make sure that people understand all the good things he's done. But Ashley, you know, Bidenomics isn't resonating. And, and you've actually seen uh, the White House kind of pull back on that messaging. 
Absolutely. And I do agree with Robert in regards to that intellectual uh, part of what he's saying. I think what the problem is, if you're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, or Dubuque, Iowa, I don't think that you're feeling anything that's positive coming out of what's happening with the, at least the stock market. You have um, inflation that is up at least <clears throat> on some pro consumer products, excuse me, in rent in um, in insurance and in car insurance and in food and electricity I mean they're up 20 percent almost from last year and so that's what the American people especially outside the big cities are feeling every day yeah and, and also too, Robert you know there's a little bit of palace intrigue I want to get into it actually I'll get into this with both of you but no labels is reportedly trying to reach out to former New, New Jersey governor Chris Christie about a possible role in a third party bipartisan presidential ticket. This is after he did his bid, obviously, for the nomination. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin is also making a trip to Manchester, New Hampshire on Friday to talk to voters there. He was on with Shannon Bream on Fox News Sunday yesterday to discuss all of this. I want you to watch this, Robert. I have never been a spoiler, nor will I ever be a spoiler on any election. If I'm involved, I'm involved to win. But to be a spoiler for the sake of throwing the election one way or the other, I would never do. And uh, that's not what, uh, how or what I would ever make a decision about. So we'll just see where we are at that point in time. Robert, then he goes on to say that it's Super Tuesday that's going to determine whether there's a need for a, a third party candidate. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think no labels um, is obviously an interesting uh, thing what goes on. Larry Hogan just left no labels. He just supported Nikki Haley. I actually am surprised Chris Christie didn't throw his support behind Nikki Haley. I don't think he has any shot to be the next candidate. Uh, Joe Manchin would have lost his Senate seat in West Virginia. Um, him, you know, putting this out there that he may run makes him more relevant than, uh, than maybe he should be with respect to 2024. Um, I'm hoping that it's President Biden versus whoever the GOP uh, contender is. And let's see, um, th there's a real choice to make. And I think President Biden it will bode well for him. You just said hoping it's President Biden, Robert. Be careful <laughs> about your language. Robert, <laughs> Robert Wolf, <laughs> Ashley Davis, thank you so much for being with me. Appreciate it. It's good to see you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank